member of the DATC media family. This is Dropped Among This Crowd, a podcast that dives into the music and community of improvisational progressive rock band, Humphreys McGee. Each episode will feature a rotating schedule of insightful show recaps, interviews with members of Team UM, as well as musicians who have been inspired by the band. This is your place for the latest news and happenings in the world of Humphreys McGee, keeping you informed on what's going on or where you can catch the next show. I'm your host, Sarah J. Thanks for joining me as we dive in. Are you prepared for what comes next? Well, thanks for for fitting us in your already very busy schedule. We're so excited to chat with you about the sit-in and also about the many connections between umps and um and goose. So it's gonna be cool. I'm excited. And this is just exciting, anyways. I'm. It sucks we weren't able to cross paths at summer camp, but um, I knew something would come up for us to have an excuse to talk, and here we are. Absolutely. Yeah. I brought some very old umps memorabilia. I have a few things, but this one I was like, oh, I got to bring it out. It's from 2012. Yeek. Can you guys see? Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to turn my camera on for <laughs> this because this is amazing. Okay, so I don't know if you can see. Oh, my God. It says the same thing. I got mine in Uh, Denver. I think I got mine at Brooklyn Bowl. I want to say 2012 was Brooklyn Bowl. That is is so funny. (laughs) This is my most favoritist. It is the best book bag. Um, we actually had two. We had a blue and a red. My husband was with me. He got the blue. And we we used the blue one so much, it sort of fell apart. And so I've been like <laughs> keeping this one pristine because it's such a great book bag. It has like every bell and whistle you would want in a backpack. And it's great. It's It was such high quality. I was really impressed. Anyways, I just wanted to. My number one travel bag. I take so good. my book bag. I'll take like a suitcase, you know, depending on whatever. And then like my computer bag will have my equipment in it but the book bag is always with me on every run every show every whatever I love that you have one too that makes me so happy (laughs) goose sort of leaned into the style of the guests versus the other way around because mostly they have guests for covers for the most part um when you see them have special people come out it's usually they're playing like no rain or like you know yeah stuff like that so this was really special, especially because it's like such a big um, song for the community. So I think it was extra special because of that. I know yeah. I was shocked that this is what they were playing. Personally, uh, I was like, what? Empress? Get the F out of here. It was great. Yeah, it was pretty cool that like I, that surprised me. And then also just like to me, Umphreys has been such a part of this scene for such a long time. I mean, like they that was just who everyone talked about when i was in college like and they, they've supported JFC. goose so much i mean yeah. they played red rocks the first time because umphreys invited them to come play and open for them so like in um in 2020 so like i don't know there, there's just a lot there that i yeah. just felt like really really beautiful sarah can you hear us sorry we just started talking I, we, no, we no, talk no, about I, goose a lot so <laughs> no i'm listening and you know what's really great i was really excited if you guys can hear me okay sorry if i'm cutting it and out um, I was really excited to talk to you ladies about is because I, I will admit, and I've admitted this a bunch of times on my own show and on my YouTube channel and stuff. Um, I don't know very much about goose. I don't know, uh, uh, anything at all, honestly, about their catalog. Um, so I'm very interested to, to hear what you guys had to say about, the song choice to have them sit in because I know from my perspective when Umphreys has people sit in you know I think about that and kind of gauge of like okay yeah cover original you know exactly what you guys were saying so I'm I'm so glad you kind of led off with that because that was going to be my main question for the two of you was from where you guys stand what was it like to have them sit in on on an original tune um 
you know, because yeah. I, I don't, I don't know goose like that. So I can't say for me, I mean, I've listened to it numerous times. I've watched the video. Um, I think everybody really melded well together, the different tones and styles of playing and um, Rick, you know, I think that his style, like the way that him and Jake played together was really like they were both very patient they listened to each other they came together really well their tone and their sound because sometimes you know an idea of a sit-in with two guitarists sounds really great but then it happens Mm -hmm. and you're kind of disappointed and that is (laughs) happens you know and then I think that this was really executed very well and you know nobody stepped over each other's toes you know, it was it was very nice. And and I think Rick, you know, he he held his own against Jake. He really did. I'll, I want to just just answer your first question about how we felt about the song choice. So I was noting, I think right before you pop back on that, um, usually when Goose has folks sit in with them, they do covers for the most part. That's like the standard. They'll do like No Rain or, you know, like the other person's song big boy came out and they did so fresh and so clean things like that and so i actually went back to look and see if anybody else had um sat in on this particular song with goose and the only other person that has is trey anastasio and okay. the two times he sat in with that one was during the two boost tour and the other was um at radio city it wasn't um a conversation sit in it was very much like oh he's sitting in with them and then he's going to take a solo and then they're going to play the song pretty much the way that they they usually do and jam it out the way they normally do this was very different and i will say like just sitting in the audience they announced that joel and jake were coming out first of all i I need to just mention that they had had like a really disruptive um set just before um goose's set that night um second set they had somebody come jump on stage disrupt in the middle of the show was very very disorienting for everybody like literally so i wanted to just name that like it was kind of a um a little bit i don't know just like a weird night generally speaking because that disruption had happened and there were many stages to that like the person being tackled and like taken away and it was it was a lot of drama so i just won commend them for even like coming and doing the sit-in after that disruption happened during their set because that's really unsettling for a performer like someone literally coming on the stage while you're while you're doing your thing Um, so just the consummate professionals that they are i I just wanted to shout that out as well um shout out the residents crew for oh yeah they they handled that snippety snap quickly shout out to them but then for me you know this particular song the empress of of organos is like a goose fan like this is our song um they usually close shows with it either usually it's a lot of times the encore or the last song of the second set it's sort of our like you know we like love to be together the message of it is like we've got the love and rhythm and a lot of times it's like you know people are being negative but we as a community we're positive we say what a day to be living and it's a really positive like uplifting song and we adore when we get to sing it all together you know in the show there's two points where there's audience participation where we all clap together so it's a really um community like fire you know sh- song for us and so for me sitting back there as an Humphreys fan and obviously a huge goose fan i was like oh my god this is like dream come true great song amazing song for the community and then just to see what joel and jake were going to do with it i was just immediately like Oh, on high alert, just really, really excited. Um, I noted a few things because I listened and watched just today and I've listened and watched it plenty of times, but coach um, John Lombardi, who is the, um, who does all of the uh, broadcasting for Goose live streaming, he ran out just when the announcement, when they announced they were coming out and like pulled extra cameras, uh, like covers off of extra cameras, which meant we were going to, I once I saw him do that, I was like, oh, this is great because this means now the show itself has incorporated um, Joel and Jake into direct cameras that were going to just show them. And I was really excited about that um and then you also hear peter at the beginning um say to joel like oh yeah yeah and and then we'll just take it from there and that to me was really such an indication that this was going to be a musical conversation amongst these musicians and i was i was just pumped just to get to that hannah did you have anything to add about like song choice and like what your thoughts were when they when you when they started empress and like 
what what you were thinking we were like right next to each other i think so we were um, I guess, to me i'm gonna be real honest some of the people who were with us from the cincy trash crew they grew up in the ohio jam band scene like i did but they're not 100 percent sold on goose they're like you know they were 70 percent sold on goose and after the umphreys sit in they're like 95 percent sold on goose because even though umphreys might not be a band that like our crew sees all the time and like no one goes on tour with them just like they know how important Umphreys is to the scene and so to them they were like well if they sat in with goose i guess goose is kind of a big deal like not because tyler and i talk about them all the time but because of this sit in and so for me that was like you know I, my favorite word is magical for me that was just a magical experience because it was like i could shut up and stop talking about how awesome goose was and just let this this sit in speak for itself yeah and then, like you said, I don't want to, um, re- you know, rehash it, but just that song choice was so meaningful as a Goose fan. So yeah. it was fun. Really good. <laughs> That's special. Like, I love to hear that so much um, because, you know, I've <clears throat> I've only seen Goose once. I saw them. It was pre-COVID and it was at this very tiny bar in Buffalo that... You know, now in hindsight, I should be very grateful that I saw them in such a small venue. They played Mm -hmm. the after show after Mo played three nights here and they actually pressed a vinyl. I don't know if they did like a whole stream thing of it, um, but they did a vinyl pressing of the Nietzsche show here in Buffalo. So I know for them. out here in these streets that particular yeah. show it's very yeah. so very it's, big like big I've, I've heard this and you know in the goose community that's a big deal and that was my first and only goose show and you know it's i don't love it and that's okay because there's just so many kinds of music and that's the great thing about music and having these conversations and these different bands and having them sit in with each other and do all these different things is having different th- different tastes and different ideas allows for interesting conversations. I will say however though that I love their vibe. They just they absolutely love what they do and you can tell they're very talented musicians. Their popularity has been very amazing to watch, you know, just kind of how especially at a time where the pandemic and everything you know, kind of shifted, it didn't kind of definitely shifted everything in the music industry and how they were able to kind of use that in an advantage to where they are now. And, you know, I will tell you, their covers are very well done. Um, My mom is a huge Moody Blues fan. Mm. And so growing up, I saw a lot of Moody Blues and their cover of Nights in White Satin I always I props all day long for that, because first of all, nobody covers the Moody Blues. <laughs> like nobody covers they always them. they do they find these pockets of these really great songs. I think you know, Rick yeah. is really smart about the choices he makes and what they're gonna cover. The, it, they come out of nowhere, and it's everything from from the Moody Blues to like a fifth of Beethoven and Electric Avenue, like. Know. It's yeah. all of these very eclectic things that I think from them, from their standpoint, musically gives them a lot of space and room um, yeah. to really make things their own. And it's it's one of the things I love about Goose is the their unexpected covers. It's very much like you never know what they're going to pull out and what new thing they're going to shiny toy they're going to bring out for us to enjoy. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So I can you know, I can really <clears throat> I can really respect that. Um you know, not only to do a cover so well, I mean, Rick's voice was so nice on that. So very comparable to Justin Hayward. Um, but just to take that on, like I said, <laughs> people are covering, you know, the Beatles and, and Zeppelin and everybody else. And nobody covers the Pony Blues. So that says something. I'm like, all right, I see you. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, I wanted to shout out the um, jellyfish lady at at resonance as well if you see the video yes. you see this like giant jellyfish going through the crowd she was making the rounds of the entire um basically the entire venue yes. and I, I don't know how she was moving so quickly through the crowd it was really amazing but also she was really prominently featured featured in the video of this um 
this sit in. And so I was just, just, just vibing with her and just looking at her and remembering she kept coming back to us and then back up front and she was everywhere. It was really great. I love um, that. I actually really talked fun. to her at the end. And uh, so I think the reason why she was like so high energy is she actually, what I think was miracle her ticket for that day uh, from people I actually know. And so um, that we all know. Um, and so she just felt the need to like really give back to the audience because she got these tickets because her friends couldn't go. And so she just felt this like sense of responsibility. Like I want to bring that energy. And I like teared up when she told me that because like, that's just what a lovely thing to think about, you know? So yeah, she's awesome. That's really amazing. I love, love stuff like that. That's what I always tell people when I try to like explain it to People in the, I'm doing air quotes, real world. <laughs> you know, and I, I try to like kind of explain it more. It's like, it is the music, but it's it's more than the music. It's that, that you just explained. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that I thought was really unique about this particular sit-in was that, it, from my perspective anyway, especially watching it back a couple of times, was that uh, I think that this rendition really leaned into Ump's sound more than it morphed as a uh, add-on to goose's sound and there were a couple things that i noted one um that rick and jake started trading licks in the intro of the song before the first verse even started they had started already going back and forth also peter's exuberance immediately <laughs> was like hell yeah just <laughs> he he's a very vocal and very excited and so you could hear him multiple times being that excited about it so that was the first thing and then uh, you'll note a couple of times Rick actually takes Jake's normal, you know, Jake's dance, Sarah, obviously, um, yeah. <laughs> when he plays. And Rick does not do that. I, I will say, like, usually he does like this little hippie shake thing and his his feet are very close together and maybe slightly apart. Definitely not the deep stance that that Jake generally takes when he does solos. And so I saw a couple of times Rick took Jake's stance to kind of get into the the vibe that the whole song was taking on. And I thought that was really amazing and really cool to see just there was even a physical um, exchange in the way that they were playing with each other. And I also, um, just to, for folks that are listening, it don't know a lot about Goose. Um, Rick has a new guitar called Empress. He debuted it earlier this year. And there's been a lot of chatter about if it was a good choice for him or a bad choice. I love Empress. I've jokingly said if I, I would not leave my husband for anyone, but Empress, if somehow that guitar asked me to leave my husband, I would probably say yes. Um, so Jake has I would one. It's called Mother Earth. So, uh, see? Okay, so, see so I was excited to see how Empress would hang with somebody like Jake, who is such a strong um, lead guitar player and what that would sound like. Like, how, how would Empress respond and what, what would Rick do with it? Because he's known for his intricate picking. And that's great, of course. Joel is a big chord person and his his like his instrument is so heavy and so beautiful and um. I don't emotive for me when I hear um, Ums play and Jake does his solos. I'm always like, oh my God, like I feel it in my chest. It's so, so, you know, rooted. And Rick can sometimes be more airy. It's a lot more light, a little lighter. Not that he doesn't get down, but it's just two different styles. And so to me, Rick really leaned in and, and kind of altered his, his playing style for this sit in. And it was really beautiful. I, he also stuck his tongue out a bunch, which we've been getting lately, but a lot in this song, which usually is like, everything's <laughs> rocking really hard. And, um, <laughs> At like 10 minutes, 25 seconds, um, to me, that was when we switched from Goose World to Ump's World in the yeah. song. It yeah. kind of tilted on its axis. And uh, shout out to Andrew Getty, who does Goose's Lights. He even signaled it visually to the audience. And it was for me, like it washed over me. And I was like almost tearing up a little bit because it was like, oh, my God, I was like my favorite thing happened. It was like that aha video, you know, where they're like color and then like there, um you know and and drawing it felt like a switch that kind of switch in the, the song to watch and what was i noted was at about 12 minutes 45 seconds there's this moment of like where do we go now which always happens in a jam y'all know um and i love that they they let that sit 
it's such a hallmark to note these are really great musicians and jam musicians specifically because obviously non-jam musicians, this might be very awkward for them to sit in that place of like, we don't quite know where we're going to go with this. And it was, to me, it just showed so much trust with each other, so much um, respect for each other as musicians that they didn't feel like they had to jump in or somebody had to say something. It was like, no, we can we can sit here for a couple bars, let things settle and then figure out where we want to go from here. And I really, I, I just love that. It was just that comfortable, uh, that comfortable silence when you're just chilling yes. with friends and you're all just hanging out, nobody saying anything. It's like, yeah, it's gorgeous. And then my last notation, well, I have two more sound uh, no, time stamps of 14, 20 seconds is when I feel like it didn't, it wasn't a melding. It was like, we were full umps at that point in the song. And, um, Listening to Jake's big chords with Rick's picking, it was like a perfect melding um, at that point in the song. And I mean, I, I go back to that particular point in the um, sit in many times, both listening to it and on the video, because to me, it was just like, wow, this is something really, really special. And I felt really blessed to be able to witness it in person. It was really beautiful that that moment where they were going back and forth and then they started playing together and the two styles really melded so well. And yeah, it was just really beautiful. I can't say enough about it. It was so great. <laughs> I I agree. Everything th that you're saying, I agree with a hundred percent. And I just, I will say also, I love listening to you talk because it sounds like when I'm talking about a jam and so many times when I am in crowds with people talking about jams, people will come up and they always look at the males in the circle when they're talking about right. jams. And I'm over here just dropping so much knowledge and insight and whatever, and nobody's listening. And I think it's fantastic to have this conversation with you ladies. So <laughs> that was just awesome to hear you just talk about all of that and the timestamps and you're just speaking my love language right now. So <laughs> yeah, we, we dissect a lot. So I mean, for us, it's like a big part of why we love the the music so much. I mean, we listen to the boards a lot of times. I mean, we go back to the same shows and we're not a like dissect um shows you know jam by jam we really kind of highlight the things we really love about a show or a run um but we do have very strong feelings about <laughs> the specificity of the jams and what we do and don't like about them and what works and what didn't work and this i mean it just hit all the cylinders of a good jam band performance and both in length the the conversation was just so present mm -hmm. you could see them talking and both of them had their eyes closed at one point, but the conversation was still flowing. And that's when you know they're in that flow state and just the beauty that comes out of those moments in jam band music is just like, that's the sweet stuff. That's what we I, all are there for, really. I agree. I would love for either one of you, both of you, whatever, to send me some versions of this song that you like. I have not gotten around to listening to, you know, a version without somebody sitting in and so i would love to hear that so please choose some of your favorites and email them to me i would love to hear them and you know then Absolutely. go back and listen to this and kind of do a comparison from there too but yeah, i like, think you'll be I surprised at how, so. how significant a difference this was i mean it really will stick out i'll send we'll send like two or three okay, that are cool. some of our favorites but i and i'll send you the trick the trace it in as well from taboos in particular um because i think that was the one he was more sit any uh, radio city was a little it was such a one-off he was only stay, supposed to stay for three songs and then yeah. stayed for the whole set so i think that <laughs> anything beyond those three songs he was just kind of like noodling up there but yeah. taboos was a little more planned um uh so definitely i think that's another thing to compare like, like i said it's the only other sit-in they've done with the song has been with trey so i think it's a good comparison too for sure. um the last timestamp that I wanted to mention was 1729, again, trading back and forth. And also um, Pete at one point was like kneeling next to, uh, he was kneeling at the keys and it was so cute. He was just like looking up, like his hands were like uh, at his face level. And it, it just, again, it just showed how much they, 
I mean, I know they really just love and respect um, both the musicians and all of Umphreys so, so much. And um, they're just great people and it, it's shown through. And even at the end, you know, Peter doesn't swear that much, but when he swears, we take note and he's like, these guys are the shit. So that's what, that, that's like, it's very rare you hear him swear um, on the mic and he was feeling it. So yeah, it was great. Yeah. What were you saying, Hannah? Oh, um, just like when you talk about timestamps and the way that you, you dissect stuff, Leslie, I've learned a lot participating in this podcast about how to do that. I think it's something that even when, if you're a woman and you've been around jam band scenes for a while, you don't necessarily do. Cause kind of like what Sarah said, no one expects you to. Yeah. And so like, you'll touch on stuff that I can't necessarily articulate. So I appreciate that. But then also, Sarah, um, part of the reason why I reached out to you to collaborate is because when Chelsea and I were preparing for summer camp, um, you came up in my feed because I was following summer camp and like you had tagged them. And the way that you had written your post, I was like, this kind of sounds like an Umphreys podcast, very similar to our podcast for Goose. So I click on your uh, Instagram page and I'm like, oh my gosh, this looks so much like what we strive for with GCP. And so I really wanted to reach out to you because it it is a different formula of podcasting about a jam band. It's not just dissecting, oh, that's a sick jam, that's a sick jam, like that sort of thing. There's a lot of other conversations that are that we can have about jam band culture. And it seems like you do that. So I appreciate your podcast and what you do for the Umphreys community and for you being so willing to, you know, try and do meetups and collaborate and stuff like that. I just, I appreciate that. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Well, it it means a lot to me. I mean, doing this, it's now grown into a media company that is is my full time job and and a bunch of other things that uh, I do now in in the music industry and within the Umphreys world and community. And just to hear you say that, sometimes I still forget that the podcast is beyond my four walls. And there's people listening and, you know, people see your posts yeah. on Instagram, you know, sometimes I forget. And, and when people like you reach out or, or somebody will stop me at a show and I'm just like, oh yeah, I forget sometimes that people are listening. And it's really cool to see what you guys are doing too, because like I said, it's, it's just awesome to have all the chicks in the, in the music and just talk about their favorite thing and have these different conversations. Like you said, not only the music, but just the culture and the community and the different niches and the, and all the parts of it. It's so fascinating to me. And that's what really had me start my show was first of all, I didn't really have anybody to talk to about Umphreys. <laughs> I needed an outlet because people in my life were sick of hearing me talk about it and didn't understand it. And, you know, so, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, I guess, is the phrase. <laughs> and uh, so that's why I started my show. But then it was so oh. fascinating to me because we're so different. Like when you go to an Umphrey show or a Goose show or any different show, it's like we look so different on the outside we're different ages, we're different genders, we work in different jobs, we're all so different, but we all come together for this one thing that it is. And whether it's Umphreys or it's Goose or it's Fish or it's whatever it is, you know, everybody has their thing. But it's so fascinating to me, the community that comes around a band and that forms around it and the people and the part of it. And, and it's just so fascinating to me. It is. And that's really why we started this show. One, there wasn't an all women show talking about goose, although there's plenty of goose, several goose podcasts, but yeah. we just felt there was a hole in terms of like really addressing things we felt were important to the community. So we've covered things like, you know, what's it like to be sober at a goose show? What's the yeah. sober community like? We've covered um, bringing kids to shows, best practices for that. We've covered consent culture with Ashley yeah. from Groove Save. So for us, it was like we wanted to bring these conversations into this particular community from our POV as women. And then also just be like, yeah, we have a lot to say about the music also. Yep. Um, and so we're going to talk about it in the way that feels right for us. And we're just as knowledgeable as anybody else out there. We listen to just as many shows. We go to just as many shows. Yep. And 
Um, one of the things that I find, you know, I've been a jam band fanatic for like the better part of 30 years. And um, I've seen so many bands, almost any jam band that's been out in the last 30 years, I've at least seen them once. And some I've seen quite a few times, Umphreys included. And one of the things that was really unique when I started percent usually of the rail of goose shows are women and so for me it was like such a it was so different so unique in jam band culture and I wanted to kind of talk with people like why is that like what is it about this band and this community that's formed around them that's made it an inviting space for women to feel that they can be themselves that they can be together that they can claim space where usually we're sort of like fighting um for just you know autonomy um in some of these jam band spaces and so that's the other kind of kernel that we've been tossing around and kind of runs through all of our shows is this notion of like, what is it about this band that makes it some place that we as women feel we can be ourselves and connect with each other. Like the ladies room at goose shows is like the best place on earth. <laughs> um, it's like literally just, just a sea of flowing beauty and connection and wonderfulness. And so we wanted to bring some of that to the podcast space because it. it was missing. It was just missing. I love so, it. Yeah. I love it. It was, it was. And, you know, having these collaborations and, you know, I, I'm already with the wheels are churning with, other things that uh, I would love to do with you ladies. Um, but this is just so great. I've been looking forward to it all day. And I definitely want to make sure that we talk about Ben basically going on tour for a little bit with Umphreys. Oh my gosh, you don't even know. So of course this happens all the time. We go to do the show, they'll announce some crazy shit. And then we're like, guess we got to talk about that now. So of course we're coming up to do the show with you. And we're like, well, Got another thing to talk about. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. So exciting. Like six so exciting. Shows, six shows, I think I counted. And he does like <laughs> Alabama and Asheville, which I'm doing the whole tour starting next week in New Jersey. So I'll catch three of those shows. So I'm excited. Which uh, shows are you going to? I'm going to be in the Ash the first night one of Asheville. So I hope you're there. I Ooh, will be there. Point. Yes. I'm yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. We we have to link up for sure. I'm so excited. I would go the 26th as well, but in the bathroom. We yes, in yes. the bathroom or wherever. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. First yes, of all, Ben is your phone is number the, and we will we'll link up. We'll make it happen. Absolutely. And it's funny because I just saw Dark Side of the Mule last night here in Charlotte and nice. Jason Bonham opened for them. Nice. And he, Jason's also sitting in um, and, and you know, filling in for Chris while he recovers. Shout out to Chris. Please recover well. I'm so happy that you're taking the rest and time that you need and that these amazing drummers, Dwayne Trucks, Ben, Jeremy um, Salkin, and Jason Bonham have stepped in to support Umphreys on this next run. One, it just speaks so much to the community that jam band musicians are. I've been calling the last five years a jam because it feels like a whole, you know, array of not just bands, but collaboration with each other, a community of musicians that is so rich and robust right now. I haven't seen it in so long. It's been like so beautiful to watch. Sarah, have you, do you agree with that or or no? I do. And, you know, it's really interesting too, is because, you know, whatever your, your mode of, of social media is, you know, whether it's the Facebook groups or some people are still on the board, which I guess is still around or fantasy tour used to be a thing a long time yeah, ago, yeah. kind of showing my <laughs> age here with the jam scene. Um, but you know, there's so much hate with the fans against the bands. And, and like I said earlier, you know, there's just so much music. How can you just say you don't like it? Don't hate it. <laughs> you right. know, like it's okay to not like it. Um, but these collaborations show that, that's all you guys, because the bands don't feel that way. <laughs> you know, exactly. they all want to play they, together. And they make it clear. They Thank make it you. so clear. Thanks. They make it so clear yep. that that's not their vibe. That's not yep. what they're about. I mean, I think Trey sitting in with Goose and then, you know, taking them on tour was a big, I, I think it was a big signifier because they had been getting a lot of hate from Fish fans. And it was sort of like, listen, Trey's obviously sold. Why don't you guys just chill? Yeah. Um, and so I love seeing these collaborations. Also, like Ben, his name, Akin, is very uh, apt. He is one of the most kind human beings that you know you'll ever encounter just so sweet um we had his mom on the show uh, in may she's a therapist and she came on to talk about mental health and um mental health awareness month she's absolutely brilliant shout out to you june and um 
So yeah, Ben is just the sweetest. And so I'm just excited to see him get to rock out. And it's one of those things, you know, Rick's been playing all over everywhere with Phil Lesh, you know, with Bob Weir, with all these people and Pete and Rick get to sit in with um, folks quite often. And so I'm so excited that Ben is getting um, to do more as well. And he just was out with his band, Elephant Funk. Um, They just did a whole um, tour recently. I think they're wrapping up like tonight and tomorrow, I think in Connecticut, but they've been, that's been really well received. And so, yeah, I'm just excited for all of them to continue to grow as musicians and to be able to play with some of their heroes and the people that they, you know, came up in the jam band scene loving so much. And so I, I know this is a huge moment for Ben and it's very, very exciting for all of us. So I expect to see a lot of goose fans at those shows is what I'm really trying I to I thought about there. that too. I mean, where there's going to be the crossover now is there's going to be a lot of goose fans that are going to come and want to see this because it's such an awesome experience musically. As an Umphreys fan for 17 years, over 100 shows, I'm very excited to experience somebody else behind the kit. I mean, I love Chris. People always ask me, who's your all-time favorite drummer? And I'm like, can I say Chris Myers? You should, <laughs> like, for sure. Just like, saying. <laughs> this is like, I mean, I'm going to say the it. I don't know beast, what that's so, about. Yeah. Me, but... <laughs> and also one of the busiest drummers in the music scene, sh- quiet as it's kept or not so quiet. Just noting that like Chris is like everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, for e- real. Literally everywhere. For <laughs> real, for real. So um, like, I'm excited because... You know, Ben can learn how to play Umphrey songs, but Ben is still going to have his style and his sound and his whatever. And totally. so I'm really excited to see what his his little flavor and his artistic idea. And, and who knows, maybe they're going to play to junk and Ben sitting there and he goes, you know what, guys, what if we played this section like this? Mm. Yeah. And they play it and it like, cha- you know, you never know what's going to happen having and these it's, drummers in it's there. It's true. And it's so interesting when I looked at the slate that they've announced so far. I know there's a couple of dates that they haven't announced who's going to sit in, but like they're such different drummers. They play with such different bands and such mm-hmm. different styles. So, again, it's just a, you know, such a testament to the versatility of Umphreys and their music which is that they, that Dwayne Trucks can sit in and Ben from Goose can sit in and Jason Bonham can sit in yeah. you know these these are um you know yeah sorry Hannah you're right elephant proof I said that wrong what did I say elephant funk yeah 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 sorry well, elephant like, proof wait, is am I, wrong? <laughs> I was just thinking, no you're right it's elephant proof is Ben's band that he just finished finishing up a tour with right now um he was in that band before he joined Goose and so um, yeah, again, it's just a testament to the sustaining power and the musicianship of all of Umphreys that they're able to like, yeah, we don't care. What do you play? You can play with us. Like yep. just that entire countenance. I just think it's beautiful. When I saw that lineup, I was like, wow, Umphreys, whoo, they just, yeah, they can do it all. So I think it's going to be interesting to see is like, um, you know, actually Goose fans get shit on, especially the women fans, because we oftentimes like other types of genres like i know i saw some shit talking about like people posting in goose facebook pages not goose related i'm going to taylor swift and like oh my god you would have thought that it was like the a war crime that they were going Seriously. to see taylor swift okay and so but my point is that some of these huge goose fans um Goose is the only jam band that they listened to yeah. up until they got super into Goose. And so these people are going to be going on um, to Umphrey's shows. And like it's going to change the dynamic of the crowd potentially if enough Goose fans go who aren't used to it. So I'm just, I think that's like a cool aspect too of these collaborations is like people are getting exposed to music that maybe they never would have listened to otherwise. Yeah, it's true. And that's what I mean about the Jamisons is like there's a spillover as all yeah. of these bands fans start to interact with each other. I'm going to see Eggy next week. That's another great up and coming um, jam band that I think we're seeing as part of this Jamisons. People like fans of other bands are like, oh, yeah, I want to check out Eggy or I want to check out Dogs in a Pile. Or I want to check out whoever. I think it's Kendall Street Company. I mean, the list goes on. There's so many you know young bands that are coming up in the scene right now. And that's why I say 
I, I, we've never had this level of this deep a bench of yeah. different types of jam bands that we can pick and choose from. So like hating on a band makes no sense. Like find the one that's yeah. yours or the and few that you love and, and just ride hard. I it also that. seems like there's less rules. Like, you know, I feel like 10 years ago when I was listening to a lot of jam band music, there are all these rules like, well, that's not a real jam band or whatever. And like mm -hmm. now there's more uh, collaborations with bands that maybe aren't like Goose has collaborated with people who I wouldn't consider to be jam bit like I would consider to be like indie rock or something like yep. that and so and like I think there's even been conversations with like indie rock bands being like oh I love jam bands but like I just don't do that and then like jam band people including the guys in Goose being like well we really respect what you guys do it's not what we do and so I think that's part of the renaissance too is like fuck the rules like we just want to play music with our homies and like yeah. Just play music and have a good time. And yeah, there's, yeah. there's just a lot of fluidity with people. And they're just like, we just want to play music. And I don't know if maybe maybe that came out of of the the pandemic, of COVID. And, and so many mm -hmm. musicians and music and people not being able to play together that now it's like, let's, let's play together because we can, you know? So maybe that is, yep. is something that, thankfully came from yes. not having that time with music is you know it's made musicians be like no we want to play together as much as possible totally <laughs> you know and just the creative energy that flows back and forth you know i know even here doing this podcast with you guys this is the level that we are creative and like i said i've already got so many ideas so the same thing happens when musicians get together, you know, it's, it's the same thing. So I, I get it. You, you just, you get that energy and you're like, yeah, this, this is fun. <laughs> it's fantastic. I want to mention for all the goose fans that are listening um, to our side of this conversation on our feed. Um, if you sign up for the Coda Collection on Amazon Prime, Umphreys has an amazing uh, Red Rocks repeat. Their 2016 run at Red Rocks is up on there. And I would highly highly recommend that you check it out um just i just wanted to throw that out there because goose just added a bunch of their cap run and also the radio city shows to that coder collection so i know a lot of us signed up and are watching it's on there a, it's worth it too i think what is it only oh like my god there's so many great things there's there. so many music documentaries and concerts and whatever concerts from the 70s concerts from so so many it was ridiculous concerts. It's like, really, it's, a, it's a, a wealth, uh, you know, it's an embarrassment of riches in that collection. But I wanted to highlight the Red Rocks repeat. I watched it like two weeks ago or something like that. I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm pretty so good. And, I think the um, Ryman yeah. 2019, maybe it was 2019, the Ryman run is on there too. That one I watched and that one was really good too. That's like a bucket list venue for me. I want to go and see Umphreys at the Ryman. Yeah, we, so we, bad. You know, were you at Ryman? No, I I saw Goose. They played three day, three oh. nights there this past year. It was nice, very spectacular, yeah. super yeah. special. I mean, it's the church of rock and roll. So yeah, I was supposed to be there, and then I had a work conference that I oh right that you conveniently couldn't, couldn't, forgot about when I committed to going to the Ryman, and then was like fuck. It was beautiful. Um, yeah, it was really great. A lot of uh, Peter's mom was there. I got to chat with her a little bit. It was beautiful. Um. It was just, yeah, I mean, that, that place is so hollowed and you can feel, you know, the history. The energy, the energy. Yeah, the energy, even the acoustics. I mean, just something very special there. And so it was great to, my whole thing is like, well, the first time they're playing places, I want to just like see it because it's only, yeah. you only do it once, first once. So yeah, I've been trying to catch as many as I can uh, as, as they've been playing these bigger, more historic venues, which is exciting. Um, so what's coming up for you, Sarah, on y'all, y'all show? I mean, obviously, um, says touring per use. Uh, what, what's, what's the haps over there? Uh, well, there's always a lot going on at DATC. Uh, my show is going to start working on summer tour recap. So it'll start with the Bonnaroo set. And then I'm excited to get to talk about the Buffalo show, which is where I am. I live in the suburbs of Buffalo, New York. Um, so working on that. Also, my uh, company, DATC Media, has launched a new show about the sober community. Uh, it's the Much Obliged podcast, A Yellow Balloon Experience. Um, you can check that out anywhere you podcast. Um, I think there are 12, 12 episodes in. Yeah, it's still fairly new, but it's a very awesome new show. 
um, from DATC, and it highlights a member of the sober community, and they share their story through sobriety, and they talk about what it's like, you know, being a part of the jam band community and living a sober lifestyle and what that's like for them. Um, Really powerful show, and I'm really grateful to have them on the network. So that's kind of the newest thing. Um, but everything is at datcmediacompany.com and I'm also on Patreon. Um, so yeah, check it out. Always lots of stuff at DATC. I volunteered at, um, Fish Wilmington night one with Ashley from Groove Safe and the people from the Yellow Balloons were right next to us. So I got to meet a couple of the people who are really involved with Yellow Balloon for Fish. And then during set break, as we know from doing our show on that topic, they trying to get in a meeting during set break. And so we actually, like they were right behind us doing their meeting and it was really cool um, just to see that experience. And like, you know, Ashley and I um, do like drink alcohol on occasion or whatever. So, but like, we both found it to be so powerful just to see that level of community and engagement and, um, you know, they would, people would come up and like hug the couple that was in charge of the booth. And they were just so excited to see each other. You know, some of them hadn't seen each other in a really long time. There are people who came up who had connected on social media and it was their first time attending a fish show, not um, using alcohol or drugs or anything like that. And so that was a really cool experience. I think it's awesome that Sarah is doing an entire spinoff uh, podcast series on the yellow balloon experience. So I think it's great, too, because that yellow balloon experience has ballooned outside of any <laughs> individual band, right? Like Goose yes. has a hot tea party. And I think yes. this idea of making space for people to be sober and support be supported in their sobriety at shows while understanding lots of stuff is happening at the show around them, right? It's, you know, it can be very... I imagine intimidating if you're yeah. newly sober or just trying to maintain your sobriety. And so I think it's such an important part of the jam band scene that this is something that is consistently shows up yeah. once the band has a good number of people that are considered fans that they, that, that one of these groups will spring up. And um, we, when we did our show with, um, with Matt from um, a hot tea party, I just remember it was such a, I don't know, so much information that he shared um, about that. And then we had two sober fans that were on um, with us to talk about their experiences, how they got sober, and then what it's been like being a Goose fan, a sober Goose and, fan. And even like when I was at that Fizz show, like I am not in recovery, but I didn't use use any substances at that show because I'm volunteering for consent culture. So like knowing that there are other people who are also sober at that show, it's like, oh yeah, like I'm not alone. And it's just a totally different experience. Um, especially at fish. I've noticed at least in my anecdotal experience, people at fish shows are more likely to come up and talk to you if you're by yourself. And so there were people who were like kind of spun out sitting down to talk to me and being, you know, no alcohol, not even pot, nothing. I was just like, oh, okay, like I'll talk to this person. But it was just like totally different than if I was partying, you know, I don't know. It's just interesting. I love it. Um, Sarah, I know we broke up. A we were just continuing the conversation about like how great it's been seeing these yellow balloon communities pop up. Goose has one as well, hot tea party. And we did an episode with uh, one of the founders of our the group within Goose community and two um, sober Goose fans about their experiences. And so I, I, it was just an eye opening conversation for me anyways, just to experience and witness and, and talk with them and, you know, understanding the complexities of being sober in the music scene, especially in the jam band scene and then the beauty of this really deep support uh, systems that have, you know, been created within these, um, these communities. So I'm so excited you're doing kind of a spinoff show really focused just on that because I think it's really important and it really speaks to the ways in which music can connect people um, outside of just a show and outside of just experiencing what's happening on stage. Um, you know, I, we've been toying around with this concept of, you know, it's the 50th anniversary of hip hop this weekend, actually. And, um, you know, there's five elements of hip hop and we've been discussing like, what are the elements of jam band community? What is, what is the, the elements of jam bands? And so um, I think this notion of, of defining community through connection is one of the pillars. Um, and these sober communities are really indicative of that. So 
Yeah, obviously. I feel like we might have to add podcasts into the mix at this point too, because they've become <laughs> such a big part of the scene as well. So I'll have to have to pick that, put that, put a pin in that one and see if it. But yeah, put that one in there for yeah, sure. It was really interesting to to talk to the to the people that you know formed the Much Obliged group, which is the Umphreys group, and to hear them talk about how far it's branched into. Apparently, there are professional sports teams yep. that have sober communities now too. I mean, it's really branched into all the different kind of entertainment things, people's, you know, outlets and, and, yep. and things like that. And it's really good. It's shifting the narrative and, and that conversation that people are having with drugs and alcohol. And I think that's important on so, 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 so many levels. Absolutely. Well, I know we're coming up on our time and also you've got shit to do today, Sarah. So we want to let you get to go and do that. (laughs) This was amazing. Obviously, I mean, I honestly could spend two hours talking just about this one song set in. I know it was just 20 minutes, but it was really impactful to me and just a really beautiful um, melding of musical worlds for me personally and just beautiful. I mean, Hannah can tell you, I was just like freaking out in the back. Yeah. Oh, we were standing by the lighting rig because I really wanted to. Get I love in. that so much, though. I I love hearing people have that experience with music and and witnessing it in in the crowds and stuff, and and just to hear you say everything that you were saying about it was it was very awesome. So thank you for inviting me to do this and and this collaboration. And I'm same. excited to absolutely. And what's I'll see to you come for too. us and what's to come for. Humphreys. Absolutely. I know. That's I'll exciting. See, I'll see you in a couple of weeks, which is extra <laughs> exciting. So um that's gonna be really fun. And yeah, I, I mean I think Goose is gonna th- Goose is going to show up for Ben. I'll say that. Like, he's just the, the most amazing person. He, like, gave me a shout out from the stage on my birthday. This is the level of kindness that he shows to the fans. He's just that kind of, you know, open hearted. Um, His fiance, Sam, is she always comes to the line, gives people, makes sure everyone's hydrated. I mean, it's that level of care and concern that they have for the community that is the Goose community. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna grab another picture. I'm getting I'm getting one. all the photos for <laughs> for social media. This is so awesome and exciting. 